नमस्कार वेलकम टू द सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑन द सीरीज फॉर टू डायमेंशनल फाइनाइट एलिमेंट एनालिसिस एज आई हैड टोल्ड यू अर्लियर इन दिस सीरीज वी विल बी कवरिंग ट्राइंगुलर एलिमेंट फॉर्मुलेशन नंबर टू थियोरी ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी नंबर थ्री कॉन्स्टेंट स्ट्रेन ट्राइंगल्स फॉर प्लेन स्ट्रेस एंड स्ट्रेस एनालिसिस एंड देन विल बी सॉल्विंग अन्यूमरिकल प्रॉब्लम इन दिस लेक्चर we are going to cover or theory of elasticity remember that this is not exactly a complete uh, review of the theory of elasticity we are just going to just cover the basics we are just going to cover the basics okay so uh, first of all we'll talk about the um, stress and strain uh, remember we need to remind ourselves what are stress and strain stress basically is the deforming force per unit area it is measured in newton per meter square by default it is the si unit newton per meter square the notation for stress is sigma a strain on the other hand it's the apparent change in shape so whenever you are applying force on a body what is going to happen is uh, the body might change shape depending on its elasticity and uh, as a result uh, there will be displacements in the x direction in the y direction in the z direction and the notation for strain is epsilon uh, hooke's law says that stress can be expressed as a product of modulus of elasticity typically young's modulus here and multiplied by strain right so this is what the definition as a brief recall of the definition of stress versus strain so we'll have we'll first of all consider a three dimensional uh, elastic body uh, completely the elastic and uh, the various uh, forces that are applied on the body from multiple directions maybe there will be multiple forces there might be single forces uh, but under various uh, forces uh, there will be displacements because there will be deformation and there will be displacements in the x y and z directions and the dis deformations or displacements in the x y and z directions are given by u v and w all right so uh, we'll consider these material property the modulus of elasticity the young's modulus typically it is uh, denoted as e the poisson ratio it is denoted as nu and the material is assumed to be isotropic what is isotropic isotropic means that the elasticity or the deformation is you know uh, the elasticity basically it's uh, uniform in all the directions so if the modulus of elasticity is e in the x direction it is also e in the y direction and also in the z direction so elastic property is basically isotropic that is what i am saying now there is poisson ratio poisson ratio basically the um, if you go to wikipedia it will say that poisson ratio describes the expansion or contraction of material in the directions perpendicular to the direction of loading okay so if the for if for example the direction of loading is in the xy plane so poisson ratio says that uh, it the expansion or contraction will be in the z plane so in that way it will be expansion or contraction of material in the direction perpendicular to the direction of loading so um, if the direction again again reviewing here if the direction of loading is in the z direction the poisson ratio will be applicable in the x and y direction and otherwise and the similarly other planes will be there so hooke's law says in three dimensional elasticity theory we will have the generalized hooke's law so we will try to generalize uh, hooke's law here and uh, also try to see what the expression looks like so there are these relationships the relationship first of all we'll talk about strain now as i told you earlier strain represents the deformation of the uh, body so as a result so there will be deformation in the u um, in the x direction which is represented by u there is a deformation in the y direction which is represented by v and there is a deformation in the z direction which is represented by w so normal strain that means strain in the x direction strain in the y direction and strain in the z direction will be there so normal strain is given by del u in the x direction it is del u by del x uh, in the y direction it will be uh, del v by del y and the z direction del w by del z now these are shear strain shear strains in the x y plane there will be shear strain so del u by del y 
shear plus the del V by del X. Shear strain in the Y Z plane that is del V by del Z and del W by del Y. And del X uh, no, gamma basically we are talking about shear strain in the X Z direction is del U by del Z and del W by del X. So these are normal strains and shear strains. So there are two types of strains as I told you and these are the these uh, relationships uh, represent the these equations represent the relationship between the strain and the displacement so now there is a relationship between the stress and the strain also so normal strain so that is there is an expression relating epsilon x and you know sigma x that is what i am saying so um, epsilon x is 1 upon e sigma x minus nu uh, sigma y minus nu sigma z as I told you earlier so see the for example if I am going if there is a displacement in the deformation in the x direction there will be corresponding deformation in the y and z also and but that will be multiplied by nu here so there will be stresses in the y and z also and that will be multiplied by nu here so this is what is represented in this particular equations so there will be normal strain and the shear strain and these are what the relationships are given as. Okay, now if I see these equations, I can write, I can try to write these in form of a matrix. Now remember that in finite element methods, we are always trying to write things in terms of matrices. We are always trying to solve it as a matrix based problem because there are software like MATLAB, Python, etc. So which have facility of computation over matrices. So the, we are going to try and solve things over matrices only. Okay, so if I try to you know generalize these equations here, we will obtain a matrix like this. So all the epsilons, all the strains here are on the left hand side and all the stresses are on the right hand side here. Right now you can see this and we can express this in this kind of relationship. But typically what we are interested is we are put we want to put the stresses on the left hand side and the strains on the right hand side. So generally this is the convention. So all the stresses on the left hand side and all the strains on the right hand side. So we'll have to take the inverse of this particular square matrix. Now you can go to the MATLAB or op Octave software and try to do a symbolic um, computation of this particular of the, of the inverse and if I do that what will happen we will get this kind of expression. So again you can see the red matrix the red, red vertical vector here is sigma x sigma y sigma z and then tau xy tau yz and tau xz and this is what we get as a relationship if I take the inverse of the square matrix which I saw earlier. So this basically gives us the generalized Hooke's law. Okay, so here the stress matrix, then there will be a D matrix, and there will be an epsilon matrix. So those are the epsilon matrix is the strain matrix. All right. So this is what we call as the generalized Hooke's law. Now the size of these matrices vary when we are doing two-dimensional analysis. So when we are doing 2D analysis, the size of these matrices will change. And let us see certain assumptions. Okay, now when we apply these equations to two dimensional analysis, so there are two conditions one is plane stress, and the second one is called plane strain. So, what happens in a plane stress condition? The plane stress condition it means it says that there is no force, there is no force in the z direction. As a result, sigma z is going to be zero there will be no shear stress in the x and z plane there will be no shear stress in the y and z plane so these are the basic assumptions so as a result of the relationships that we had earlier we uh, will see those relationships here so these relationships will directly give us that the direct implication will be gamma xz will become zero uh, gamma yz will become zero because of the relationship but it will be seen that this epsilon z will not be zero which means that in a plane stress situation there can be deformation in the z direction this is what the direct implication is all right 
Now we are going to uh, you know have an example like you know this example is of thin plate with a hole. This is a typical example in a plane stress situation. And if I do the some recalculations, recalculations of what? If I you know apply these conditions into these matrices, we will get this kind of matrix. So this is the matrix that we get. We have sigma x, sigma y, and tau x y. So sigma x is basically uh, stress in the x direction, stress in the y direction, and then the stress in the x y plane. And this is what we are interested in. We are not interested in the deformation of the uh, deformation of the z in deformation in the z direction. We are not interested in that right now. So we will have this particular matrix and uh, e upon one minus nu square, and this is the calculation that we'll have. All right. Again, in the plane strain situation, again the loads are applied in on the plane x and y, but the assumptions here as assumptions here are that epsilon z equal to zero. That means there is no deformation in the z direction. There is no shear stress, a uh, shear strain in the x z plane. There is no shear strain in the y z plane. As a result, the direct implication, direct implication will come from these equations again. The direct implication is that the shear uh, strain will be um, the the sorry so the shear stress that is tau x z uh, will be equal to zero because of the relationship tau uh, y z equal to zero because of the relationship. But sigma z that means there will be a force in the z direction. This is what it means. All right. So on recalculations, recalculation again of what? If I apply these conditions to these equations, remember, if I apply these conditions to these equations, what will happen? We will get a recalculation and the recalculation is like this, E upon 1 minus nu square and 1 of nu, this is how it will look like. All right. So if I compare, so let us compare the plane strain and plane stress conditions. If I compare the plane strain and plane strains conditions, we will get this. The conditions are like this, sigma z equal to 0. That means there is no z, there is no force in the z direction. There is no force applied being, uh, there is no force being applied in the z direction. This is what it is. And in, in the con in contrast, if I do look at the plane strain condition, it will say epsilon z equal to 0. That means there is no deformation in the z direction. The example of a plane stress condition is thin plate with a hole. This is how the matrix looks like. And the example is a gravity dam. Here, that means uh, there is no deformation in the z direction, but there will be sigma z, there will be force in the z direction. Now, remember that when we are doing uh, analysis of a gravity dam, we will consider the cross section of the dam in the x y as the x y plane, and the uh, along the um, cross section there will be force of the water on the walls of the dam so that will be the z direction here so as a result there will be force in the z direction and this is how the matrix looks like so thank you for attending this lecture these matrices that's these relationships that we have derived will be used in the analysis for constant strain triangles in the next lecture thank you for listening it